Things we love to see. Politicians being held to account for betraying the solemn promises that they have very publicly made. This is what's called accountability. Now, I know politicians of all stripes like to think to themselves, well, I should be able to break my promises willy-nilly, just as a little treat for myself. Why should I get any blowback of any description for that? Now, Keir Starmer has what we could describe as a particular fetish for making solemn promises. He then breaks. Take your pick. Nationalisation, taxing the rich, scrapping tuition fees, ending universal credit, taxing big tech companies, we really could go on. But there's no, no more serious promise to abandon than taking action to preserve human civilization from extinction. Labour have watered down their pledges on a multi-billion pound green transition fund and ending oil and gas transition, just as two other examples to throw into the mix. So Starmer today did a speech on young people, using young people as props. We'll come on to that. But some of them decided they had something they wanted to tell the Labour leader. Low paid and insecure. And insecurity is the enemy of opportunity. It places barriers. Not just, e want, not just economic barriers. Pledge, reinstate your pledge for 28 billion per year. I gave my, I, on the mission on uh, green power, we did that last month. We've so done that terms. one. Will you just... We are on the side of economic growth. Will you just let me please get on with this? Thank you very much. Stop making here. We have already... Will you just let me finish this and I'll come and talk to you about it? Thank you very much. Look, look, my last speech was about this. Will you please... There's lots of people who want to hear this. Please don't drown them out. Please don't drown them out. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right now. I'm sorry, but that really is just a pathetic way of responding to teenagers holding you to account about the very future existence of our planet. Clearly rattled, clearly uptight. Now, a charismatic politician who can think on his feet would have responded very differently. They wouldn't have ended up in that no man's land between Alan Partridge and David Brent. They'd have shown some aspiration, some respect for the aspirations of those who challenged them and their clear uh, dedication. They would have, I suppose, kind of styled it out in some way. But not, not, not so for Keir Starmer, who, to be fair, has had the easiest ride of any Labour leader since Tony Blair from the media and his own MPs, so is not exactly used to being challenged. Now, I love the way he responded to their fears about the existential menace posing humanity by saying, I'm on the side of economic growth. Really answered their concerns there, didn't you, Keir? I also noticed he said he'd speak to them afterwards. Anyone think that was going to happen? I mean, there's just another example of Starmer dishonesty. I, I really do not think he had any intention of speaking to them afterwards when he said he was going to do so. This guy has the same affliction as Boris Johnson in that he is so used to dishonesty, to deceit, that he just casually throws out promises he knows he'll break within minutes in this case. This, I think, what happened as well, this protest, is also, also quite a clever metaphor. You see, young people are expected by the Labour Party to just sort of stand there as props, to offer Labour their unconditional but silent support, but keep their mouths shut. And if they dare to speak and show that they've got minds of their own, then they'll be told to silence themselves. If you're young, Labour does want your votes, but Labour does not want your voice. Now, the group behind this Green New Deal, please do follow them on whichever social media channels you prefer. Um, so th this is a brilliant Green, Green New Deal rising who repeatedly challenged politicians on their promises. So they they put their demands for Labour to be bold on the climate emergency. They said that means committing to public ownership, wealth taxes for 1%, permanent um, and progressive windfall tax for polluters, green jobs for all, and a national nature service. And we need at least £28 billion pounds in the first year of a new parliament, not scale back plan. Absolute bang on. And those are the what should be the commitments of a Labour Party, which is serious about saving human civilization. Now, it really does get more pathetic. It just gets so pathetic. I'm, I'm actually embarrassed for this guy. After the protest, Starman's his comms team decided it was a good idea to tweet this. Labour's opportunity mission will give young people from all backgrounds the chances they want and need in life. I won't see working people held back any longer and I'll never be shouted down or distracted from that mission. Shouted down? I'll grow up. That really, it's just pathetic. 
I'm embarrassed for you, Keir Starmer. How thin-skinned is this Joker? Two obviously extremely bright and engaged teenagers challenge you on your countless objective U-turns. You know that you have U-turned over and over and over and over again, including on the little trivial issue of our future existence as a species. And they challenge you in a way which was very calm and very polite. And you call that being shouted down and you think the way to respond to what happened is some sort of public show of defiance on Twitter against two teenagers. It's embarrassing. You are a thin-skinned man and that's unfortunate because you are seeking the highest office in in the country. I mean, how's this guy going to deal with Donald Trump if, God forbid, that guy gets re-elected in the United States? If he thinks that was too aggressive, too clearly very bright teenagers politely challenging him, rattled by these two politically engaged, calm teenagers. It's embarrassing. Now, I was on Good Morning Britain myself today, as well as Keir Starmer, and I talked about the climate emergency. I'll share that clip in a minute. But I also spoke about Starmer's clear addiction to dishonesty. The problem I have with Keir Starmer generally is, he's, you, when I see pledge next to Keir Starmer, he's made a series of pledges. He said we'll have nationalisation. He dropped it. He said we'll scrap tuition fees. He, he dropped it. He said we'll mm -hmm. tax the rich more. He dropped it. He said that we'll stand with trade unions when they go on strike. <clears throat> he dropped it. Everything he's done throughout the last three years is dropping things he's promised. So I'd like you to put to him, my, I'd love to hear, why are these <clears throat> pledges you're making, yeah. these solemn promises, is it any different okay. and why? That's Quentin. why I want to know. Is now, he went on after that, which is quite funny, because I hope I made it very clear to viewers that whatever Keir Starmer was going to say is something you should be sceptical and critical of in advance. I'm glad to say the presenter stuck to that theme. Is it a reasonable question for people to ask whether they can believe anything that Keir Starmer does actually pledge? But I also spoke about the climate emergency, and this is what I said. The didn't, didn't just they? sabotage the Grand National, they bombed. And they and I'm not recommending, I'm not just before no. I get dragged off by the police, I'm not recommending just a pile do that. But the suffragettes did far more than, than anything just a pile did. Mm -hmm. They smashed apart galleries uh, and actually five people died during their campaign. Uh, people look back and go, well, look, Whatever we think about the suffragettes' tactics, the cause they were fighting for was far... was, was a... Well, the injustice was far more evil. All I'd say is, this is the test is, how's this going to look in 30 years, this discussion? Mm. How's it going to look when we have more <laughs> extreme droughts, famines, mm. extreme weather events, millions of people driven from their homes? As we just discussed, you've been discussing today, we had the hottest day on Earth mm. since records began on Tuesday. The second hottest day was Monday. The consequences of that yeah. are millions of people. I'm sorry to be people watching breakfast, getting up. It's, we want to be cheerful. Are you going to do millions, a doom and gloom? Millions of people are going to die. I'm really sorry to have to spell this out. And but that's because the... we've put emissions into the atmosphere, trapped yeah, in the heat, and it has consequences. It's a climate crisis. Is which is what the, the phrase that they are desperate for us to use. They're desperate for the government to stop giving out oil. Climate catastrophe. Yeah, catastrophe. Well, oil catastrophe. Oil licences. Parliament already passed a law saying it's a climate emergency. It's mm. already the official position of this mm. country that we have a climate emergency. And that's what I, I want to end this because this really is the most important issue facing our civilization but it is also a massive opportunity. We can create a whole load of well-paid jobs. We can have affordable public transport, cheaper energy bills, cleaner air, greener more livable spaces. We could go on. Like this isn't some sort of oh no we're going to make our lives miserable or be all pain and sacrifice. Quite the opposite. It's an opportunity to create a world that's green and just. And this is a moment, a challenge, an opportunity that we can seize. And, you know, finally, just on the young. And I have to say, as a geriatric millennial, I really do think the younger generations are going to save us. They're going to save, I think, as long as it's not too late for the planet. I think they're going to save us from all the horrible injustices that we've suffered for the last generation, two generations at that. But I also think they're going to have a little patience because, you know what? The young hate the Conservatives in this country because they've been done over by them. And they are going to kick the Conservatives out. I have very little doubt about that. But is it interesting YouGov this week released new ratings, rankings of Labour politicians? And then Corbyn actually came up top in terms of likes, in terms of people who said they liked him. And it's important I'm not talking about personality here. I'll, I'll just show you what I mean. So for Keir Starmer, amongst millennials, um, those are people aged between 27 and 42. They're not youngsters anymore, these people. I can say that bitterly. Um, amongst millennials, 85% knew who Keir Starmer was, but only 27% said they liked him. 
And look, for Corbyn, 92% of millennials said they knew who he was, but 44% said they liked him. That's not about personality, that's about what they're seen to represent. And younger people who've been screwed over by a broken economic system, they want, they need fundamental change. Now, I think they're going to vote Labour in huge droves to kick out the Conservatives. But what happens two years into a Starmer government when they don't get the change that they need? What are those young people going to do? I think Keir Starmer, if he felt a little, I don't know, rattled by being heckled, and politely so, by two teenagers, if he found that tough, wait until he's two years into a government and already starting with very little goodwill, very little popularity, the Conservatives collapse in the polling is down to the Conservatives destroying themselves. I think he's going to get a lot more anger than that, which he suffered at the podium today, which he's receiving when he's in leader of the opposition against one of the most catastrophically unpopular governments in the history of British democracy. Please like, subscribe, please support us on patreon.com forward slash I'll see you in a bit.